We've now come to a point where we want to start adding our camera within the scene. And uh, first of all, just make sure that your scene is as clean as possible for anything. So for example, these mesh generators that we've got from the uh, course, uh, we definitely want to get these into a folder as well. Uh, so we're going to move them into a new folder. And that folder we can actually name as mesh generator. Uh, because it's really good to, to keep this, you know, done in this way, because then you can just deactivate things if you want to, and, and, you know, really helps you out to keep the, the, you know, the flow of this a lot better. And then you have all these things that are effectively, um, you know, the, the rest of the, the geometry, and we may want to drop that into the mesh generator as well, uh, just so we can then go and we can hide everything if we want to and just leave only the center stage here. Okay, now I'm going to also turn off these um, smoke um, activators. And at this point, we want to set up the camera. We're not gonna do anything to the lighting as of yet because we don't yet know how the sequence is gonna pan out. But instead, we are going to add the camera and do some settings on that. So uh, the first thing is to actually generate the sequence where we can generate the camera. I mean, it really depends on what type of camera you want to use. I'm not going to use a camera on rail. I'm going to use a normal camera instead. Um, so let's just talk about the normal camera for now. So into my folder in here, I am actually going to generate a new folder and I'm going to put that LS sequence. So actually, I'm just going to call it level sequence like that. So this folder can contain all the various different sequences that you can make. And within here, we can right click, go to cinematics and select level sequence, and we shall call that LS uh, TUT from tutorial, okay? So we can actually double click it, and this will open the sequence around here. Now this sequence, by the way, can be docked like that if you'd like, uh, but this will obviously reduce your view, and, or you can take it out and you know keep it around like that. So it's really up to you what you want to do with that. Now, in a previous tutorial about the Unreal Engine basic cinematics, I have gone through most of the elements on this sequence. So I'm not going to go through that again, because you can just watch that tutorial if you want to catch up to speed with all this. But I am going to tell you what I'm going to do and why I'm doing it. So our track right now in the sequence is empty, and we can add the camera through the sequence itself. So if we press this button over here, it creates a camera automatically. And this camera has a few options in here. Um, it's already filled in our camera cut. So when we export a render, this is what the uh, is going to export out of the sequence. Uh, we can decide how big the sequence can be. So we can use control zoom out to basically the mouse wheel to basically zoom out and then have a look at all the sequence. This is how much we're actually going to export right now. We are going to set the FPS to 24. And then we can look at how big the sequence can be. But for now, we don't need to worry about that. Uh, when we created the camera, we also automatically possessed it. And you can tell by this icon here that's white. And also you can see in here it says uh, we're piloting the cinema actor camera, which is also now in the scene. If you close the sequence, you see the camera has disappeared. So if you go back and you double click the sequence, you'll see the camera again. So that's very important for you to understand that that's how that works. Also, your sequence is not actually in the level here, but if you'd like, you can drop it in the level just so you know that this is uh, this sequence is always in this level, okay? So I think that's going to be useful if you want to ensure that you will always find the sequence here instead of uh, double-clicking it in there and maybe you've got another level opened. Uh, right, okay, so with that done, we've got the camera here. We, we are no longer um, piloting the camera. And if we want to pilot it again, if you press this camera over here, you're piloting whatever camera cut you are on right now on the track. So if you had a different camera here, you would actually pilot another one. But you can't move the camera in this way. But if you pilot it from here, you can now move the camera like, like you'd move anything else in the viewport. Also, um, the uh, the camera itself, if you, let's say you are not no longer piloting, if you select it from here, you can also right click it and select pilot camera, which will then mean that you're again going to be able to pilot the camera for some reason uh, on displaying. I'm, I'm not sure why, but yeah, normally that's what happens if you do that. 
I think uh, if you're piloting it from here, you have to click this button in order to see it. But we're piloting the camera. We do have an eject button if we ever want to be kicked out of it as well. Now, let's just uh, go back into pilot mode. Um, very important to know about the camera that they're, they're actually functioning like cameras in, from real life. So what I mean by this, let me just put the sequence to one side and, la and then let's select the, um, the camera itself. And you'll notice in here we have a bunch of options. Now, these are the locations and rotation of the camera. That's not very interesting right now. Uh, you, there's nothing to do with the scale. The only thing that the scale is going to change is the camera's mesh, which indicates where the camera is in the world. And that can be useful if you want to see your camera from far away. But it's not going to affect the image at all. Now, in here, we have some options. So the first option, which is the look at tracking settings, we're not going to actually go into do anything with this, but this is an advanced feature for people. I wouldn't actually uh, look into this. It's basically, if you have a moving object in the scene, you want your camera to look at it, to literally look at that object as it's moving around the scene. Um, but we're going to generally animate static stuff anyway. And then we've got the film back, which allows us to select um, the aspect ratio. So for me, I'm going to go for 16 by uh, 16 by 9 DSLR. And this is giving us a DSLR look. We have some, um, you know, sense of width and height if you want to manually change that. But this is the 16 by 9 format now. We then have a lens setting. So this, you can select how, you know, how, what your lens zoom is going to be looking like. So if we select 12 millimeters, you can see now we're getting so much more into the shot. But everything has sort of been distorted. Uh, if you use 30, this is a standard. Uh, if you use, I mean, all of these are standards. But what I'm saying is like, we're going to go with 30, which I think gives us the best balance here. And then let me just actually push the camera a bit closer to the altar here. Um, and now we have the focus settings, which is set the manual to 100,000 centimeters right now. Now, if we set that to, you know, a far larger number, nothing will really happen because what happens is, is like everything here is blurred because it's too close to us. So if I put that to one, for example, everything now becomes blurred everywhere. Um, if I actually choose this option where it says draw debug focus plane, we can't even see it right now because it's so close to us. But if I push this to like 1000, you can see where the focus of the shot will be. Now, as I, um, you know, change the setting, you can see that plane coming towards us now. And this is where we can see the zoom, sorry, the, the, the focus being applied. So now if we disable the focus plane, we can see that we've got clear view of the goblet and anything up to that point. And we have a motion, we've got blur or depth of field on anything behind. Okay, that's going to be quite useful. Now, if we get closer to the goblet, we're going to lose our focus. But we could now, you know, decrease that to bring our focus to the goblet right about there. And then everything else is going to be blurred behind. And again, you can use the, the, the debug to, you know, effectively push that further, something like that, wherever you will want the focus to hit. Okay. And that's pretty cool. You know, right now the nose of the skele of skeleton is a bit in, not in focus, but the stuff behind it is. So, you know, it's really about how your shot is going to pan out. We can animate this later on as well. Now, some other things in here, you've got, um, uh, the ability to crop the shot if you'd like. You can also select to smoothly change the focus and that's going to be helpful to get a nicer sort of transition. By the way, if I push the focus, I want you to have a look right about here. You can see the sort of line. It's like it's as if it's lighting up whatever the focus is. And this will be visible in the render, by the way. And it's not, it really, it really is more of a limitation of the engine with lumen than anything else actually if i think about it i could have a look in my project settings and see if um, it's changing from lumen to uh, none as a lighting method yeah you see even even with that you still have it so now we are actually not using lumen but we still have the same thing which is a bit of a shame um, i'll look into this and see if there's a solution but yeah basically that's what we've got there um, okay, so we're now able, as I said, we're now able to set the focus wherever the camera is. 
Um, and then some other options in here, like you've got constrained aspect ratio. If you untick this, you are not going to have these two black bars around. And it's really your preference. I mean, obviously you're losing some of the shot without the, with these on. And you're obviously getting more of a fill if you don't. So it's really up to you if you want to do that. And by the way, the post-process blend weight is going to affect whether or not you're getting any motion blur. So if you keep this to zero, you're not going to have any, any sort of depth of field. But if you're putting this to one, you're going to get depth of field. But if you want the depth of field to be lower, even though this is what your zoom level is at, you can always sort of work with this uh, slider here to reduce that. But it's very, like, it's not going to change a lot. You know what I mean? Like, you're not going to see a, a zero to 100% change when you do this. Um, and then the rest of the stuff in here is more like things that you'd want to do in the post process rather than in here. And I do cover that in the course, uh, but I wouldn't really touch any of these settings if you're going to use a post process anyway. But these are going to, you know, um, affect how the camera's lens reacts to the whole scene in terms of global illumination, in terms of color grading and so on. And those are the basics of the camera itself. Uh, and as I said, you can control this camera by WSD and control and mouse to move around and look at things. Okay, so you can see how just some bit of depth of field adds so much realism to a shot just because we're doing that, right? And without it, without it we, wouldn't, we wouldn't be able to get such a clean shot. Okay, now, okay, let's move on.